Hey, this is a Par 64 guy. I know the lighting is pretty awful, but all purpose of this video is to show you how I resolve the poor lighting that was in my garage. So, typical garage style lighting is a couple of single light bulbs, you know, maybe one on either side of the uh, room, which is what uh, my garage had. Uh, it's pretty bad, you know, it's if you're standing anywhere not directly under the lights, you've got shadows, you can't see what you're doing, and you have to rely on additional lighting that you have to put up. So what I decided to do was make use of the newer LED technology and put some uh, of the reels of LED lights up. That's a lot better. Well, let me show you what I did. First of all, let me apologize for the mess. After all, it is a garage with a lot of stuff in it. Anyway, as you can see here, there's a strip of LEDs affixed to the ceiling on each side of the room. I have the lights turned off so they don't flood out the camera. These are a ribbon style LED light totaling 16 feet in length. The backing you see is a one and a half inch porch screening system base strip, which I purchased from Home Depot. These come in 8 foot lengths, so I needed 4 in total to install the two 16 foot LED strips. Using these was recommended by a friend of mine who professionally installs LED lighting. He said the advantage of them is that they are easy to install to walls or ceilings using screws and they provide a predictable surface for the LED strips to stick. This is better than the uneven and variable surface you see here with the sheetrock and mud joints. The LEDs are wired with a couple of different wire types. Soldered directly to the strips are some thinner leader wires that came with the strips. To them I spliced some heavier cable that can comfortably handle the higher currents required by the LEDs. These strips run off of 12 volts, so at 72 watts that means 6 amps of current will need to run through that wire. Thicker gauge will mean less voltage drop and thus less wasted energy. I used 14 gauge landscape wire since it has a nice thick insulation and can comfortably handle the 6 amps. Remember, 14 gauge house wire and extension cords are rated for 15 amps, so we've got plenty of margin. Since there are two strips of LEDs, you can see two runs of this landscape wire. Both runs come into this electrical box which houses the 12 volt power supply. They are secured with wire management clips which are nailed to the wall. The power supply has three parallel outputs for easier wiring of multiple strips. Its AC mains inputs are on the left. For the mains, since I needed to use stranded wire, I opted to use a 14 gauge power cord in lieu of discrete stranded wires that would require a conduit. This cord has a nice thick outer sheath to protect the wires, which also made it easier to secure to the wall and ceiling using the wire management clips. For the power source connection, I added an extension box to the original lamp socket installation. The cord was fed into the box and secured with non-metallic cable clamps, typically used for Romex installations. By connecting the power supply here, I maintain control of the lights using the house's wall switches. I can also fall back to the original light bulbs if something goes wrong with the LEDs or the power supply. Well, it was a relatively simple modification to my lighting in my garage, which didn't cost a lot of money and the benefits were just you know, priceless. Uh, the fact that now I could walk almost anywhere in my garage and not have to worry about shadows, I could see clearly, um, you know, just working on projects in here, it makes all the difference. Uh, you could see when I was doing the leaf blower repower project that was uh, easy to see what I was doing uh, without having any supplemental lights because of these uh, these LED lights. So they do consume a lot more power. You know, the original you know, two bulb solution was 26 watts. Uh, what's in here now is 144 watts. But for the amount of coverage I'm getting for a uh, probably a 400 square foot area, uh, 144 watts is not bad. Uh, well worth it to me uh, to not have to worry about... Um, playing around with, you know, rigging up extra lights to do stuff in here. So hopefully that uh, gives you some ideas. Obviously, whenever you're doing stuff with electricity, be careful, uh, use common sense, follow proper electric code, and make sure that what you do is safe and, um, you know, won't cause a problem in the future. As you saw, the power supply was mounted in a dedicated electrical box uh, that I got, and it was actually a GE, um, I think it's a switch box, but it gives me that, you know, 
kind of fire enclosure and protection for those wires that are up on top. Uh, I haven't put the cover on it yet. I need to make some modifications to that because that power supply does have a fan. It does require ventilation. So I do need to put some slots in it to um, allow it to properly uh, ventilate itself and stay cool when it's running for long periods of time. Uh, fan only cycles once in a while anyway. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. And this is Par64Guy. See you later.